Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a brand new oversimplified video. It feels like it's Christmas today or something. It's on the first Punic War. Now, this is a topic that I don't really know too much about. Normally with these videos, I like to provide a bit more commentary and analysis and give more details to the historical events that are taking place in the video. But I gotta be honest, Roman history, Greek history, ancient history overall is not really my forte and so this is something that i just want to learn more about i do know a little bit about the first punic war i know it's between rome and carthage carthage spo spoilers sorry i mean this is a 2000 year old war so you know spoilers on this one but carthage loses and it has some massive effects so without further ado let's get into the video um if you like what you see i've done reactions to other oversimplified videos go check that out maybe i'll make like a playlist or something and then put it in the top right here remember to like comment subscribe and uh yeah without further ado let's get into it oversimplified the first punic war part one it was made possible by nord vpn let's click go. the link below and get an exclusive deal with a huge discount and a 30-day money-back guarantee introducing our new glorious breathtaking bucket plushie limited quantity oh, available now buy along now. with some punic war character pins oh, wow. buy them or i'll marry your mother it's your choice i think some people wouldn't oh, mind that actually Marcellus, you sure have a lot of dignitas kiss me <laughs> okay <laughs> 99 problems. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Hi, son. Just reading the newspaper. What can I do for you? Well, you know how you always say Rome is the greatest civilization in the world? It bloody well is. Well, I was just wondering, what makes us so great? How did we come to be? Wow. My son. Boy, let me take you on a journey. To this side of the room. The story of Rome. Yeah, his style has definitely changed a lot. Baby boys going to town on some she wolf <laughs> mommy milkers. That's gross. You're gross. Uh, sorry, son. You're not gross. I love you. They're called Romulus and Remus. And when they grew up in 753 BC, they founded Rome. But there was just one problem. Hmm. They couldn't agree on which of them should be the king. But they worked it out peacefully, right? No. <laughs> oh, heavens no. Romulus yeah, caved Remus's skull in with a shovel. Here's a picture. Our first king committed fratricide? I know. <laughs> Look at his face. When's the part where we become the greatest civilization, Dad? Well, you see, at first Rome was full of men. Oh, yeah. I'm talking like a real sausage party. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. So we invited some neighboring cities over for a big feast. And then we literally kidnapped all of their women. Here's a picture. <laughs> Look at that one. She's like... This is messed up. You're messed up. Ugh. Ugh, sorry, sorry. I'll be a better father. I promise. So then, finally, after centuries. Yeah, and so just one thing I want to comment on is like, <laughs> even though it's kind of taken for laughs now, like it was so much, the more you read about history, and like I said, I'm more on the 20th century, 19th century one, but man, the amount of human suffering that has gone on throughout all of history and just the absolutely brutal events that happened uh, i mean yeah there's really no better time to live in than right now uh safe to say that overall but uh wow let's keep going trees of monarchy those tyrannical kings started getting a little too big for their britches so we overthrew the kings and established rome as a republic is that when all the killing stopped <laughs> no. no that's when the killing surged baby we went wild and conquered the latin league the samnites the etruscans Woo! what a rush dad rome seems pretty barbaric you're barbaric oh i forgot to tell you about the time a prophet told saturn his son would one day overthrow him so so saturn literally ate his own son seconds after he was born i don't want to see a picture here's a picture <laughs> Dad, look at that. <laughs> oh, it's messed up, man. That's what that is, huh? I'd seen that. Fo I'd seen that painting before, like quite a few times actually on the internet. I didn't know that that's what that was. So it's Saturn eating his own son, huh? Huh? That was a that was a big moment for me. Sorry, I just kind of connected the dots on that one. I'm sure you've maybe seen that painting before, but I didn't know that that's what that was. Cool. And are we really this uncivilized? Hey, hey. If we were so uncivilized, would we use communal toilets where we all fart and poo together in one big stinky, steamy, dirty toilet room? Yeah, Dad. 
We would! Clean your butt with a sponge, Timulus! But all these guys just used it! What's wrong with your son, bro? I don't want to be Roman! This is so weird! <laughs> you're weird! Oh, sorry, you're oh not weird. God. I'm sure you're probably fine. Wow, okay, yeah, so big, big change of style from Oversimplified. I remember the, the World War II video is, yeah, this definitely leans more into the, the, pig, the pig war style, I guess, for lack of a better word. Cool. Uh, so, so one thing I do want to comment on is that I know, I think Rome had the first ever sewer system in, in civilization um, in regards to the room. Yeah, okay, enough said. The Roman Republic. A nation that, since its foundation, had been stabbing necks all the way down the Italian peninsula. But this isn't the famous Roman Empire that ruled no. the known world. Not yet anyway. This is a relatively juvenile Rome, still just a regional power. In 264 BC, the big daddy of the Western Mediterranean yes. was Carthage. Let's rewind a bit. Carthage was founded in 814 BC, when some Phoenicians in Tyre had a mega surplus of goods and decided to export those goods across the Mediterranean. They became the dominant trading power in the region, and to support their growing trade network, the Phoenicians established a number of colonies, one of which yeah. was Carthage. Therefore, Carthage began its life as a Phoenician trade colony, and the Carthaginians were actually Phoenicians. Or, if you're a Latin-speaking Roman, they were Punic. Hence the name of the video. <laughs> Over the centuries, Carthage gradually expanded and became the region's base of power. Just like Rome, Carthage was a semi-democratic republic with its own senate and judiciary. But there were also some pretty hefty differences between the two. While Rome was big into farming and stabbing people in the neck, the Carthaginians, on the other hand, just like their Phoenician forefathers, had built their power through trade and navigating the waves. Hmm. They went here and there, selling ivory tusks, gold, and slaves. And as a result, they were rolling in it. Whenever they weren't busy swimming around in their copious hordes of money, in their spare time, they also possibly enjoyed sacrificing their children to Baal, the god of... Let me just check my notes. Ah, yes. Plant fertility. Oh boy, these figs aren't looking too hot. Maybe if I throw my son into a burning pit of fire, they'll grow. Have you tried watering them, Dad? Hmm. Hmm. No, we'll one try of the that two. second. As a result of all their trading, Carthage had emerged as one of the Mediterranean's superpowers. But wait, they said. Rome? What the heck is that? Well, I know it's a pretty obscure little country that you've probably never heard of. But this spunky young nation was about to upset the entire region's balance of power. Initially, the two... Yeah, and funny how now, modernly, most people have heard of Rome. I think that's probably a pretty common thing. I mean, the, the city exists still to this day, um, obviously. But I think more people know about the Roman Empire and sort of the, the foundations of civilization, so to say, with Rome. But I, I don't think many people have heard of Carthage. I kind of wonder that if you take a random hundred people off the street in, I don't know, pick your major city in, in North America or Europe or, or wherever, probably more biased towards knowing about Carthage. Um, yeah, and ask them if they know that Carthage exists. I, I wonder how many people would actually know. Because um, like I said, it's only something that I've recently know about is, is the, civili is the, uh, the civilization. But uh, yeah, actually, maybe maybe the game Civ has, has helped influence this. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think if you picked 100 people off the street that, what, maybe half of them would know what Carthage is? Let me know what you think in the comments. Sides enjoyed relatively friendly relations, and it even signed a couple treaties. But it was a relationship that was practically destined to turn sour. See, yeah, Rome like everything else. Where they like to aggressively expand their boundaries, often viewing such expansion as a defensive act. Kind of like when you kill your neighbor because you knew eventually they would have tried to kill you first. Meanwhile, Carthage was a- I wonder if, like, was there some sort of manifest, sort of manifest destiny type document or, you know, idea with Rome's expansion? Or was this just expansion for the sake of expansion, right? Or was there some, some sort of, you know, untold, like, prophecy, will, I don't know, something like this that really pushed this level of expansionism? I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section below as my cord goes flying. Extremely protective of its wealthy trade network. So if you put a very strategically important island between them, mm. well, two plus two equals war. 
Tensions rose, and the two sides began viewing right. each other Sicily. with increasing mm. disdain. The hard-working Romans looked across the water at the money-hungry Carthaginians and said, Look at those dishonest crooks. Bet they've never done an honest day's work in their lives. And the Carthaginians looked back and said, Look at those simple-minded brutes. Bet they've never sacrificed a baby in their lives. Yeah! <laughs> While war between the two superpowers seemed inevitable, the event that finally triggered it was a little unexpected. The whole thing began with a few simple mad lads on a wild night out. These mad lads are called the Mamertines. They were Italian mercenaries employed by the tyrant of Syracuse, here. But when he died, his successor said, Sorry, fellas, we don't need any big burly men with sharp sticks anymore. Revolt. You can all go home. The Mamertines, as it turned out, didn't want to go home. So yep. instead, they went to the nearby town of Messana and said, Hey, man. We are but poor little buff boys without a home. May we come in? Aw, poor fellas. Sure thing. Ah, ah. Just so long as you promise not to massacre all of us. <laughs> we promise. The Mamertines then massacred all of them. Well, not all of them, just the men. And they stole their homes and families. Yep. Yeah, and, and so I'm, I know that the first professional army, really, in the sort of style that we, that we understand a military to this day, was done by Prussia, right? Because back in the day, you would, back in the day, so hundreds of years ago, you would hire literally bands of mercenaries that states would hire to go basically fight their wars for them. Right. And again, I don't know as much about Rome, but maybe Rome was the first to sort of have a standing army, too, or if they sort of use this mercenary method. I don't know. But what I do know is that Prussia really sort of embraced this model and that it swiftly fell over Europe during the um, during the, the 17 and the 1800s, where you would have a standing professionally trained army that wouldn't do things like this so that when they would get paid, they wouldn't revolt and then massacre your towns. Right. Sorry. When they wouldn't get paid. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe Rome was the first to sort of have this professional army. You guys can let me know below. Ah, this is my house now. This is my best dad ever mug now. And you guys are my new family. I like how they have a TV. Son? Yeah. Want to okay, go play go. catch with your and old a Mac too. You're not my real dad. Ugh, teenagers. I'd love to see right Among dear. Us You're running on a Mac You're not my real too. husband. Ugh, I'm so trapped in this marriage. Then get out. No, Messana was now <laughs> controlled by the Mamertines, and they began raiding up and down the Syracuse coastline. When the new ruler of Syracuse saw this, he wasn't happy. The Syracusans began fighting back, and in response, the Mamertines said, Oh crap, they're fighting back? What do we do? Quick, we'll convince the Carthaginians to come and save us. Oh no! We're in trouble, and we need a big, strong empire to come and rub our bellies. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? If I was a big, strong empire, I think I'd like to be seduced. <laughs> See? It's working! The Carthaginians had long dreamed of controlling all of Sicily. They had been fighting Syracuse and their Greek influence on the island for centuries. And now, here was a great opportunity to get one over on them. So Carthage promptly answered the Mamertines' cry for help and sent a force to garrison Messana. As it turned out, however, some within the ranks of the Mamertines weren't too happy with the occupying Carthaginians, and they sent out a mm. second cry for help to Rome. When it reached the Roman Senate, they were a little more hesitant. Going to help the Mamertines ran the risk of triggering an all-out war with Carthage, and they had only just finished conquering the Italian peninsula, so they were kind of tired. Plus, the Mamertines were all the way across the water. They had never made a leap like that before, so you would assume that to avoid any conflict with Carthage, the exhausted Romans would probably sit this one out. Nope. But you would assume wrong. Rome just couldn't resist a good chance for war. Wow, so Why? Mediterranean well, war? There's something you gotta understand about Rome. Huh. See, as a republic, they were hellbent on preventing any one man from ever gaining too much power. And so rather than having one leader, yeah, Rome didn't really work had out. two called consuls who shared power. These consuls could also only serve for one year at a time before new consuls were elected. These measures to limit the powers of the consuls were noble, but had an interesting side effect. The hmm. consuls knew they had just one year to try and gain as much glory and prestige uh, as possible. So there's something that was very aggressive. important in Roman society. Uh, and the best okay. way of gaining glory and prestige, Expansion. military victory, of course. 
The Roman political system huh. basically ended up encouraging these. Sorry, Roman politics and militaries were intertwined. Senators were often military. Ah, I see. So you basically have a society that's based around kind of a military junta in a way, sort of. Fascinating. So if they had one year, then they would just be as aggressive as possible. Cool. So that kind of answers my question about whether there was a manifest destiny. It basically just intertwined the military and politics so much that they were forced, basically, to be as expansionist as possible. Huh. That's really, really interesting. I, I did not know this. Consuls to go out and be as aggressive as your Italian grandmother when you don't eat all the spaghetti. And so the glory-seeking consuls go. convinced the people to vote in favor of going to Messana. And in, they went. Upon the arrival of the Romans, the Carthaginians in the city, amongst the confusion, were forced to leave. Now, in contrast to Roman aggression, the Carthaginian military had a slightly different philosophy. All right, kids, listen up. If you want to grow up to be Carthaginian military leaders, there's a few things you have to understand. If you fail to succeed on the battlefield, that's a crucifixion. Showing cowardice. That's a crucifixion. Hello, sir. What? What are you doing here? Okay. Aren't you meant to be in Messana? Yeah, but the Romans showed up. So you just left? Sure did. Oh, you better believe that's a crucifixion. The Roman consuls were awarded for victory and therefore tended to be aggressive go-getters. By contrast, the Carthaginian generals were brutally punished for failure, and so they tended to be more cautious and restrained. Fascinating. This dynamic hmm. is helpful for understanding some of the crazy things that happened during the Punic Wars. So, the Romans have... Huh, so when you have a system, right, in the Roman case, where it rewards expansionism, and then you have a, a, a time limit in place for one year for, be able, for people to be able to go grab this glory and prestige... Kind of reminds me of the, what is it, uh, fail fast and break stuff or whatever the hell that motto for, for Facebook was, where you got to do things really, really quickly. And the more aggressive you are, the more you'll be rewarded. So that really makes a lot of sense of how the Roman Empire was able to expand. So I know it's probably way more complicated than this, but when you have that sort of underlying structure of aggression that's how you can expand an empire so much. And, and who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong, but this is just my, 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 my reaction to, uh, to watching this here. Crossed over to Messana, and now there was some red on the island. Hit uh -oh. that panic button. This turn of events was unacceptable to both Carthage and Syracuse. So the traditional enemies teamed up to kick the Romans off their island. Hmm. They surrounded the city they signed a non and said, pack. Hey, you jerks, this isn't your island. Come out of there at once. Okay, we're coming. See, Phil, you just gotta speak with authority. That's what being an alpha male's all about. Hey, man. Uh, oh, you you brought your weapons and armor? No, I, I didn't mean... Oh, crap. Out the Roman legions came to engage the Carthaginians in battle, and they sent them packing. I wonder, what did these the battles battle look Messana, like? I'll we'll have to look it up after. Not, by going to help the Mamertines, the two sides had just slipped into an all-out war. But how are they going to get With over the Mediterranean? With the initial Roman victory, towns across Sicily, including Syracuse, began switching allegiance because mm. being a winner is more fun. But the Carthaginians weren't about to just give up that easily. In 262 BC, they began building up their forces at Agrigentum. So the Romans, being aggressive go-getters, aggressively go-got them. The Romans immediately <laughs> laid siege, hoping to starve out the Carthaginian garrison. However, because this was the first time Rome had been fighting outside the Italian peninsula, across the water, they struggled to supply their forces. Yeah. And before long, the Romans were as starving as the Carthaginians they were besieging. They had to forage for food, leaving them open to ambush. And when Carthaginian reinforcements arrived, creating a double siege, things oh. got really bad. Fascinating how even through something that's happening in, in, in the 200s BC, Still, right, we can look at points of history, you know, Operation Barbarossa being a famous one, where still supply is the most important thing that a military can run on, right? As much as people love to talk about, oh, you know, again, only using the 20th century example, you know, this tank and this aircraft and this magical piece of machinery and this and whatever, this amazing technological advancement, it doesn't matter if you don't have good morale and good supply. So 
Cool. Cool to see that this, you know, even something that happened 2,200 years ago um, still reinforces the point of morale, supply, are some of the most, or one of the most critical things in fighting a war. Everybody starved each other for months until nobody could take Brutal. it anymore. And they all finally came out for battle, which Rome won. Hmm. Here's the report from the How did they Jedi win that? Random, sir. We killed 30,000 while only suffering 7,000 losses? That's amazing. We're the best. <laughs> yes, sir. Oops. How did they Those count the that? Way around. Oh, there we go. What? We lost 30,000? We're the worst. But we won, right? Yes, sir. Mm. But we also got our asses kicked. Yes, sir. So are we the best or the worst? Depends how you measure yes, it. Yes, sir. The Romans wanted Aggregentum because they were aggressive go-getters, and they yeah. now began eyeing up the possibility of conquering the entire island. But they also suffered very heavy losses, and it was clear they couldn't sustain a campaign if they couldn't supply their troops. Here's the issue. Sicily was an island. Islands are surrounded by water. A strong <laughs> navy would be vital for supplying troops and winning the war. Yeah, this was this is Here what I was going to say. was Carthage's navy. And here was Rome's. I think you can see the problem. Historians debate just how much naval experience Rome had at this point. Hmm. Presumably, they must have had something to defend their shoreline. But whatever it was, it would have paled in comparison to the right. Carthaginian juggernaut. And so Rome had to figure out exactly what to do about all this water. How Come on, men. This? We're not gonna let some pansy candy ass water get in the way of our glorious victory against Carthage. Charge! Tell my kids I love them. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Nice. What's a boat? I don't know. <laughs> if the Romans wanted to win this war and a solid Jaws system, reference, there was only one thing for them to do. I guess we're just gonna have to go ahead and build ourselves a war fleet, aren't we? From scratch? Whoa, From scratch. Really? We don't even know how. Never mind how to fight with one. Don't worry, Hank. We're up to the challenge. Come on, guys. We're Romans. And Romans aren't afraid of anything. <laughs> and so, the Romans worked long and hard trying to figure out how on earth you actually build the latest style of warship. In the end, they had a bit of luck on their side. A Carthaginian Queen Quirin ended up accidentally grounding on Italian soil. The Romans found it and copied the design. While yeah. the new fleet was being built, the Romans trained rowers on land. And would you believe it? The Romans put together a full fighting fleet of 120 warships in just two months. A what? staggering feat. Oh my, 120 warships in two months. Wow. That is... That is incredibly impressive. Oh my god. Now, I know what wow. you're thinking, but oversimplified. If the Romans can build a war fleet from scratch in two months, then really why good does it take you half a year to make a video? <laughs> well, my valued nice. subscriber, nice. I think you should shut up. What the heck? How nice. on earth did the Romans learn I'm how still to build a war fleet? Still waiting for the oversimplified this Vietnam War, by shouldn't the way. be happening. From what I hear, they copied the design from us, sir. Well, how on earth did they get the blueprint? Carl, I, I don't know, sir, but I'll tell you what. If you're worried about people stealing your data, nice. and you want to protect nice. yourself from outside threats, don't you dare. Then you, my friend, if you mention NordVPN, I'll scream. Should use NordVPN. Ma Do you like corporations knowing everything about you and then selling your data to advertisers who convince you to buy things you don't need nice. in an endless cycle over and over until you die? Me neither. And that's why I get NordVPN, ladies and gentlemen. Supporting my channel. And so support you. oversimplified. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The Siege at Aggregentum, supply issues, and building a war fleet. So now the Romans have a navy, and it's time to put it to the test. But how does one wage ancient naval warfare? Easy. All of the ships had giant bronze rams on the front. So mm. all you had to do was outmaneuver the enemy and give him the jimmies. Easy huh. as pie. It's like and that. so the aggressive Romans set out for huh. some good old-fashioned jimmy giving. Reminds me of that, that snake game, like something.io, snake.io or something, where you have to go around and, I don't know, okay. The consul, Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio, set out for the town of Lipara, 
believing the garrison there wanted to join the Romans. As he entered the harbor, however, he found himself trapped by a Carthaginian fleet, and in the following skirmish, he was completely outmatched. The Romans may have had a brand new fleet, but when it came to engaging in they actual must have used, combat, like, bow and their inexperience or no? showed. There was just something better about the Carthaginian ships. The Carthaginian rowers had nicer abs. The entire Carthaginian empire had been built on expert seamanship. So when it came to water, the Carthaginians were better and the Romans were wetter. In their initial skirmish, the Romans were beaten so badly that the consul Scipio was given a nickname, Asina. And if you're wondering what that means, just drop the Ina. <laughs> so what were the Romans to do? How could they possibly stand up to this Carthaginian superpower? Well, there's something you gotta understand about the Romans. Back when they found that okay. Carthaginian ship and copied its design, that wasn't a one-off thing. Copying their enemies was as Roman as punishing murderers by sewing them into a leather pouch with a monkey, snake, and rooster, and then throwing them into a river, which is a thing they did. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, copying Jesus. their enemies. Many That's of the most famous Roman brutal. inventions were actually borrowed. Aqueducts, chariot racing, their gods. Even in warfare, the Romans would get pierced by a Sabine javelin, and they'd be like, wow. They'd get hacked to bits by an Iberian sword, and they'd be like, wow. And they'd copy the designs for themselves. You know what they say? Good artists borrow, great artists steal. I guess that's sort of the same, same phenomenon here. However, they wouldn't just copy it. They would advance it, finding ways to adapt it as perfectly as possible. And in That's the case cool. of naval warfare, the Romans realized if they wanted to beat the Carthaginians at their own game, they would have to adapt. The Romans excelled at combat on land, not on water. But what if, they said, we could somehow turn a sea battle into a land battle? Hmm. Sounds crazy, right? Well, they made a couple of tweaks to their warship and... Look, here they come again. They must love getting their asses kicked. Uh, sir, what's that toll thing sticking out of their ships? <laughs> no, really. They really and then they idiots. board the ships. Look at that thing. That'll make them blow over. I mean, look at. <laughs> Bob. Wow. Bob, get, get your camera out. <laughs> Take a picture of it. I mean, how stupid can you be? Let's just add a big wooden tower to our ship that'll weigh us down and blow us over in the wind. <laughs> I mean, what does that thing even do? That's really innovative, to be honest. The Romans had built a big super, super innovative gangway called the Corvus. So when the Carthaginian ships approached to ram them, the Romans would just slam them. The Carthaginians tried going around no problem. The Corvus could swivel. Try going behind. Fascinating. The Romans would huddle to the coastline. It was foolproof. Those uh. big, sexy Carthaginian rowing muscles could flex all they want, but they were no match for the Roman mind. So, ladies, That's brilliant. you see, really what brilliant. really matters is what's on the inside. Please go out with me. And with that, the Romans, who had only just recently began dabbling in the art of naval combat, thanks to their ingenious Corvus, had just managed to outclass the Mediterranean seafaring superpower. The Carthaginians were stunned, and the general in charge of the defeated Carthaginian fleet? Well, you better believe that's a uh, crucifixion. So, with their such, ah, uh, so... Dumb. You found control of the seas. The Romans could now more easily blockade coastal cities and supply their legions on land. You gotta think what if Surely, they didn't do that. The Romans were now free to unleash their aggression all <laughs> over the island. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey Carthaginians, what are you gonna do now that we're free to rampage across the island? We're gonna go inside these walls and close this gate. Oh, come on guys. Stop messing around. Come out so we can kill you. No. Oh, come on. No. Oh, no. To counter the new Roman supremacy, the Carthaginians decided to engage in a defensive war of attrition, forcing mm. the Romans to engage in siege after lengthy siege. The war in Sicily became a long, hard, back and forth slug. 
One by one, cities slowly fell as the Romans gained ground. Occasionally, the Carthaginians countered and even pushed them back, only for the Romans huh. to rebound again. And whenever a city did finally fall, the Romans could delight in slaughtering the entire population and selling any survivors into slavery, which was pretty standard procedure at the time. In general, the campaign on land was progressing much slower brutal. than the Romans had hoped. Absolutely and quite brutal. frankly, they were getting sick of it. So in 256 BC, they decided that something had to change. Hey everyone, right, so has it been going my name's on for Marcus Atilius Regulus, few decades? and I'll be one of your consuls for this year. Look, as I'm sure you all know, Sicily's being a bit of a drag. Sure, I could go and spend my entire year as consul besieging one single city, but they'll never make a naked statue of me for that. So here's the new plan. I'm gonna skip Sicily entirely, take my army, and go right for the heart of Carthage itself. Oh I'll slaughter God. the men, enslave all the women and children, and when I return, you'll all build a thousand naked statues of me. Uh, Marcus, that women and children stuff, that seems pretty evil and barbaric. No, Jim, it's perfectly normal in the ancient world. Sometimes we even chop their pets in half. <laughs> okay, guys, looks like the Romans are coming God. straight for us this time. And what oh, will they do when they get here? They'll kill us all. They'll massacre each and every last one of us. They may even chop our pets in half. That's barbaric. No, Rob, it's actually pretty normal for the time. We'd do the same to them. Who'll protect us? Funny you should ask, Nick. That's funny he mentions that too, that we would do the same to them, is that I guess bar barbarism and, and evilness is not a uniquely Roman phenomenon. That's kind of why I called this meeting. Who will protect us? Protect our families, our homes. Our children, you guys, ha, don't make me laugh. Why, you're just a bunch of stupid and weak farmers, simple-minded buffoons, cowards, fools. Rob here thinks enslaving women and children is barbaric. You're a snowflake, Rob. <laughs> yes, you are. The fact is, if the Romans manage to land on African soil, we're all gonna die. A terrifying, hideous, unspeakably painful death. Is that the end of that speech? Very yes. rousing. The Carthaginians had to stop the Romans from ever landing in Africa because they believed that would be the end. So as the Romans were building an invasion fleet, the size of which the world had never seen before, the Carthaginians were preparing an even bigger one to stop them. And in 256 BC, as the Roman invasion fleet made its way south, the stage was set for a humongous battle wow. that saw 680 warships, what? around 300,000 men, oh my fighting God. to decide the course of the war. To this day, the Battle of Cape Egnomus remains possibly the largest naval battle in human, human history, history, all the way back in ancient times. So even so bigger than Midway. The next time your granddad tells you about the time he sank a Japanese aircraft carrier. Speaking of which. Nuts, the Romans had a lot riding on this battle. They weren't just sending their warships, but transports as well, full of supplies and horses right, for yeah. their invasion of Africa. They therefore formed a protective wedge-like formation to punch through the long, thin Carthaginian line. The Carthaginian generals, however, desperate to prevent the Romans from reaching Africa, had a plan of their own. As the Roman fleet approached, the Carthaginian center feigned a retreat, luring the Romans in so their outstretched ah, flanks could envelop them and get around the Roman nice. corvus. A clever. clever plan. But with such a huge battle and so many ships crowded together, the Carthaginians struggled to maneuver as hoped. And mm. in the chaos, three separate battles emerged across the huge battle space. With the number of ships limiting their ability to maneuver, the Carthaginians became sitting ducks, and all the Romans had to do was start swinging. The Roman center wow. came out on top and were then able to turn around and rescue their pinned down flanks. The battle of Cape Egnomus was a Roman 40,000 killed. Wow. Fascinating. Okay, I actually really cannot wait for part two. I, I, I really want to know how this ends. I mean, yeah, I know it's right here, but like I'm gonna I'm gonna film a reaction video so I can release it tomorrow. 
Thank you all very much for joining me. That was fantastic. I hope you, I mean, I definitely learned a ton. I hope you learned a lot as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing part two tomorrow. I'm going to try not to spoil it myself. And yeah, thank you all very much for joining me. If you haven't yet, remember to like, comment, subscribe. It all helps the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video for the first Punic War Oversimplified Part 2. Take care.